Hello everyone, welcome back to Tales of Yakuza. I am Drunken Dan. Okay. Damn it. I was hoping I'd like cut off Sabo. Oh, I'm wise to your tricks today. Sabo's here today. You see, yes. I thought, like, see, when I was listening to these two, I was like, okay, are we doing this bit again where we just all get quiet and see how long it takes for me to breathe? Because I was going to actually wade you out this time. <laughs> I would have loved to see an hour long of just nobody talking. <laughs> if only certain YouTubers could learn that lesson. <laughs> yeah. Like Pootie Pie. Like, insert popular YouTuber here. Logan Paul. <laughs> Pootie Pie. Insert popular YouTuber um, here who should just be quiet. I mean, most of them should. I mean, it's, you're not wrong. It's like it's smile. like why Twitter sucks, right? It's because most of the time it's people's opinions, and most people's opinions are garbage. Accurate. Like people might say, "Oh, but everyone's entitled to opinions." It might be, but that doesn't mean they're entitled to share them. <laughs> so, now, but now, anyway, now. Speaking... everyone's opinion is wonderful and should be heard, unless it disagrees with me, you scum. Gonna... Yeah, basically. if you ever disagree, it means that you're wrong. <laughs> Yeah, basically, and that's why Trump. Bears. We always get it along. And that's why Thank Trump you. is president. For now. I remember. I remember. I used to mic spam that in TF2. But anyway, we actually have a topic to talk about this time, and we're gonna be on it probably for God knows how long. Oh, basically, how I've been right all along. We were both right. I think. Didn't I like? Didn't I like? Accurately describe what Fallout 70, uh, 76, is that what it is, 76? Yes. I almost called it 74, so I wanted to double check. Yes. So, I, I remember I accurately described every problem that was going to be in the game, and then it made, it, it then not only had those problems, but then had more problems. Do you know how you could have accurately described every problem in Fallout 76? By listing by every problem in Fallout 4? Because it's the same fucking game? Only worse because it's online. Well, it's worse because even during the beta, the game just flat out deleted itself on start, on startup. Yep. <laughs> even the game was like, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. The game's like, I don't want to be, you don't want to play me, trust me. I'm doing you a favor. The game somehow runs worse than Fallout 4. The, the uh, bugs are more numerous than Fallout 4. And now there isn't even, like, characters or a crappily written story to prop the shitty game up. No, and it's online. You know what the absolute worst part of that whole thing is, though? What? Is there, like, protection on people's ISP addresses? Oh, I didn't even know that! Yeah, it's, like, fucking easy to find people's IP addresses. If they're on the same server as you. And there's no, like, server way of checking for any cheating or hacking. Oh, It's like, already boy. it's rife with cheaters. Oh, and you want to know, another reason why people um, are more up in arms in this one, I feel. Just, I just real quick want to uh, point this out. This is the only Bethesda game you cannot mod because it's an online game. So modders can't fix their game. Ah, yes. The and old the models will fix that. Yeah, the, yeah, the modders are better, better at our jobs than we are. I mean, it's because modders do testing. They, no, no. Bethesda does testing, but here's the thing. They do testing, but the higher-ups will ignore it. This is a, an issue in QA that happens. Like, the QA testers are treated like shit. Like, it, it, this happens in AAA in general. They will, like, tell them the problem, and they just will ignore it because they don't give a shit because they want to ship the game out. Um, they treat the QA like shit in almost every company, and it's just awful. So honestly, probably their QA did give them a laundry list of these problems, and then Todd Howard looked at it and just said, Degenerate, we're not fixing this. He looked at it and said, hmm, I mean, I could spend the money on this, or I could re-release Skyrim. Oh, I could! And then he did re-release Skyrim, and called it Fallout 76. And then we could save more money... B by switching over to nylon from canvas. Ah, uh, yes. But well, not telling anybody, so it's false advertisement, so they, and we could actually be taken to court. So they do the special power armor and edition be, of Fallout 76. And be, and, hold on, I just want to finish. And be fined by the Better Business Bureau. Uh, by the way, they have been uh, fined by the Better B Business Bureau before. I'm stuttering, but they did get fined by them. They got fined for Skyrim 
because of that data leak issue with the PS3 version. You remember that? Ah, uh, yes. They weren't gonna they weren't gonna fix it because they literally their response was buy a PC, and then the Better Business Bureau stepped in and said, "Fuck you! Yeah, no, you're, you're gonna fix this." Yeah, no, you can't do that. And despite what some people think, no matter how many terms and services you accept, there's never a point where they can literally sell you a game that doesn't work and not get fact, pen- not get penalized. Because because the game doesn't work. There are actually lawyers right now. They're saying like, "Hey, we'll take your case in uh, suing Bethesda." Nah, there's lawyers like you're like that for every kind of big controversial game thing. I wouldn't trust. I wouldn't trust that until something actually happens. Because there's just it always comes up where a lawyer will say, "Oh, hey, we're looking into it," but it doesn't mean anything because the law is stupid and complex. But um. Anyway, go ahead about the uh, the collector's edition. So it's two hundred dollars, and for that you should have got a canvas West duffel bag, a uh, uh, what look a, a power armor helmet, which looks dis- suspiciously like a Cylon from Battlestar Galactica to me. It it's basically the design of the power armor from Fallout One, but they put a couple things on it. So yeah, a Cylon from Battlestar Galactica, gotcha. And then uh, actually, glues- wait, 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 when did Battlestar Galactica like come the out? 70s. Like with that helmet. Well, no, with that helmet specifically. It, oh, they had they had that one in the seventies. Yeah, about I mean, like, they only, okay. they only had one, they only had one season, so that would have been when it wasn't created. No, but then okay. they did have the resurgent series in like two thousand five. Like that's what I was checking because of the resurgent. People knew about Battlestar Galactica, is what I'm getting at. Okay, they probably were inspired by it because I know a lot of the art in the original one was inspired by like fifties and sixties sci-fi. Um, but I mean, that's it wasn't before that far away from the 50s and the 60s. Oh, oh, you mean Fallout 1, okay. Yeah, Fallout 1. I thought you were talking about Battlestar Galactica, like the 70s show. No, 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 no. No surprise, it was influenced by the 60s. The 60s was only 10 years prior. Uh, yeah, I was trying to say, there was a, there was a chance that, they, that when um, uh, Black Isle, I think they were called back then, when they made Fallout 1, they could have been inspired by stuff from Battlestar Galactica and various sci-fi shit. But what I'm getting at is... Oh, sorry. But, no, it was specifically like from the old fifties. Like you know, the thing with the thing with Fallout is well, it's supposed to be is, is that the fifth they never really got past the fifties like nuclear age, dramatic science thing. Mostly because they all got nuked. Mostly, yeah, it's mostly because they all got nuked. Well, it, well, no, they they actually went into like the two thousands. Their technology advanced in a weird way, but I'm not going to get into that because I'm not going to sit here for like hours explaining Fallout lore. Fuck that noise. We're here to make fun of Bethesda. So, <laughs> for two hundred dollars, you got all of that: the duffel bag, the helmet, a terrain map, a steel book, and figurines, and all that jazz. I mean, when it actually came out, instead of the um, instead of um. The canvas duffel bag. It was nylon, a significantly cheaper alternative. So, for those of you who don't know, a lot of times nylon is used for when you go to the grocery store and there's those little like store bags you can buy. A lot of times they're made out of like nylon or like some fabric, like just cheap shit that you can get for like five, ten dollars. So, so a uh, customer uh, sent an email to Bethesda's uh, gear help desk about this. And the response was, and I quote, Hello, we are sorry that you aren't happy with the bag. The bag shown in the media was a prototype and was too expensive to make. We aren't planning on doing anything about it. That's it. So, so an- another email that they also did, w- too, was with them saying, like, oh, we ran out of supplies. Oh, uh, yes. Like, like they ran out of supplies of fucking Why? canvas in the world. Like, are you fucking bullshitting? I mean, they are. But uh, this is nothing new for Bethesda, to be fair, too. But, um... So what was really funny too was people learned they were just co- so they started kind of copying and pasting one response, and they people figured it out and they made fun of that and then Bethesda responded by doing a different copy and paste response. My best, my best, and and then hold on, it goes a little bit further. They then throw the PR person under the bus so they say, oh, he's a temp uh, worker, not our a person who's actually in a Bethesda employee. <laughs> Yeah, like, they just threw that guy, whoever, well, that uh, guy under the bus when probability, like, they're just saying, oh, it's, uh, no, this guy's not connected to us, I don't know why he said that, I mean, even though it was our job to report this change to our customers, we didn't, but, let me say that, I love their compensation, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I got something ready for this. You get 500 atoms, which is the in-game currency for Fallout 76. Dan, how much does 500 atoms equate to in real money? Now, I don't know the amount, but I can tell you what I you do. can get. 
Go ahead. It's five dollars. <laughs> Do you want to know what you can get with five dollars in Fallout? Fallout's little microtransaction. Nothing. No, no. You can get a door and some plants. Um, it's also two hundred dollars shy of the postman skin that comes with the bag that the nylon or oh, the nylon bag was supposed to be based on, but that one inside the game is made out of canvas. So, to recap, they take $200 of your money under false pretenses for a pre-order pre of this game. They don't deliver on they the product, they would give you a substantially... Uh, I'm not going to say, oh, the duffel bag would have... The duffel bag was really like the clinching fact for people. And by the way, but they it, never changed the advertisement either, so they kept advertising that it was a canvas bag. Yeah, so even if you work on the base that the thing is stupid, or this thing is like a lie about... um. The Bethesda store support member who, uh, you know, temporary, not anything to do, not directly employed by them, which bullshit, but. That, and it's like, a bit of a loud how buzz. many sorry, people. Sorry about that, audience. How many people went through, did this ad go through? Like, how many people looked it over, compiled oh, no. it, made they, it? They knew. Um, they knew what they exactly. were doing. So, so here's, here's the thing, the thing. there's a, cu a couple of little notes. So, Someone pointed out, was it, I was watching a Jim Sterling video on this, I, I had to quote it because, well not quote him, but I gotta credit him for this. He made a good point. He said, their way of apologizing is giving you $5 of in-game purchases, which isn't enough to give you anything, so they're trying to incentivize you to then spend more money on the game when they didn't deliver on their $200 promise of a product. By the way, some other funny things about the physical collector's edition, it doesn't come with a disc. It was a piece of cardboard put into a disc case. In fact, every physical version is just a piece of cardboard with a disc case, with a cardboard disc inside of it. Like when you would buy those old CD players and they'd have that little fake disc in there for oh, yeah. packaging purposes. So, there is no and by the way, copy. if you pre and if you pre-ordered that version, you got it later than people with the digital version because they didn't send out the code to people. You had to wait for your cardboard disc to come in so you could copy the code down and play your online game. Mm. So even even like if the game was good, it's not. You're at a disadvantage because because you bought the physical edition, you fucking sap, you sucker. You now can't play the game until after people have already had it for several days. Well, and it gets funnier. I mean, you can't even. I mean, so the game doesn't even have push to talk on the microphone. It's always no, on. It, it's always on, so you get to hear like some guy playing with their kids screaming in the background and dogs barking and shit. It's fun. Um, the other funny thing, so... I, I'm gonna call, call this all a scam, and I'll tell you what... So it's a scam, and I say this because... You remember how Bethesda decided to opt out of putting 76 on the Steam, right? Yes. So Steam has a refund thing. Now, the way Steam refunds work for, for the audience is, um... If you play a game game for twelve uh, two hours or less, you can refund it, no questions asked. You get your money back. Um, now with Bethesda service, you cannot get a refund on a get on the game if you started downloading it. Ah. So they knew that this whole thing was a scam, and they didn't want to put it on Steam because of the refund thing, because I'm sure the refunds probably hit them a little bit with Fallout 4. And they did this in order to get avoid refunds so they could scam as many people out of their money. This is a scam. I, I, I don't say that lightly. It's a scam. They knew the entire time what they were packaging was shit. They were shoveling shit. They knew it was shit. So they made their own little stupid service to shovel their shit so they couldn't lose their money for they're selling their shit. You know what the sad part really is of this whole thing? This None of this is new. Like, no. These are all exactly the same practices they've been doing for like the last 12 years. It's stuff that we've commented on and it wasn't popular to say it back then. Now people finally have caught up to us. Like even Fallout 3, you had exactly the same kinds of problems. It's just... Oh, but people, but oh, but it's Bethesda game. What did you expect? It's like, well, I expected a game that fucking worked out of the box. Like, I'm sorry. I shouldn't, it shouldn't, like, I accept that day one patch is always going to be a thing. There's always going to be, like, bug fixes. But that's the thing. At least the other developers fucking try. Now, New Vegas, which wasn't developed, 
by them yeah. was rushed and it came out like crap. New Vegas but had Obsidian... a slightly different story to it though, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. But Obsidian themselves did eventually fix up the game. So like, I can play it without mods and you know, there might be a bug here and there, but it's not like, say if I play Fallout 3 or 4, heaven forbid if I ever bought 76. Um, but that whole story is, is interesting. We've talked about that before, yeah. about how they screwed over Obsidian, because we, we talked about that not too long ago, actually. Intentionally give um, the game to prevent having to give a bonus to them because of, sort of uh, yeah. Metacritic scores. Yes. Metacritic bonuses are bullshit, by the way. I just want to say that real quick. That is such fucking horse shit. Um, but yeah, they, they intentionally gimped it because Bethesda developed games are a scam. Yeah. They are a scam. They can publish good stuff. Like, the id stuff that they publish are great. Yeah, like, they can publish some great games, but they're, as publishers, they're all right. But because they can, but because cause they're not developing those games. I was gonna say, because publishing, you don't really have to do much. You just have to pay yeah. your marketing department, and then they'll, like, slap up some posters and cut together some trailers. And Boom. they have a Game. great marketing department. Boom. Game produced. Their marketing department is their strongest department. Mm. By the way, even that the uh, merch that they make for Fallout is really fucking chintzy. So, um, I so they had a, a, a series of figures for Fallout come out that were like around uh, I think like twenty twenty five bucks, and um, I was gonna buy buy like a power armor or like the guy or just you know the the wanderer guy. Because I was like, I kind of would like to have one, because I do like Fallout. And uh, I didn't order it online for whatever reason. And I'm glad I didn't, because one day I found it in a store. And the figure looked cheap as all fuck. Like, now, I'm not comparing that to, say, like, those 40 to $50 figures that I collect. I'm comparing it to, say, like, a Marvel Legends figure. Which, they can, honestly, like, I'll display them with a figu fig uh, Figuart or a Figma, because they still look really good. But this thing was not only looked it looked cheap, it was smaller, and it just looked like shit. Like I feel like if I bought it and took it home and took it out of the package, I might accidentally break it just trying to put it on display, like some cheap bootleg. It was just awful. Honestly, I, don't I just wish Professor would change the company slogan to "We aren't planning on doing anything about it." Oh, they aren't. Todd Howard has come out and said that they are confident in their system and that they this they feel this is the best way to make their games. So guess what? Their next two games are going to be made in this stupid creation engine that's been out of date for ten fucking years. I mean, you say next two games, next two Skyrim clones. Well, this, well I mean, yeah, you see the it's going to start star... thing. That is literally what, what is it? just the Skyrim dragon animations again. The the, the was it so? But no, I didn't see that. But so the games that they're uh, that are that they're working on, I can't remember. One's like a Star or something, and the other one is obviously the new Elder Scrolls game. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna use the system still for these games. And I'm not surprised, cause they're lazy hacks. They are lazy scam artist hacks. Never forget that time Bethesda went up against an evil almost as big as themselves, which was Notch. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> Notch had the audacity to use the word scrolls in the name of a game that he stopped developing because Notch went fucking crazy? Well, he also, if I remember, he was trying to copyright the word scrolls. Something like that. Like, that. so, so both, so it was basically like a, a, a two evils going against it, except for one just has more money. Oh, wait, no, no, no one, not as one has more money, one has more people. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Notch is fucking crazy. Notch is batshit. I mean,. Christ. I don't even know what kind of happened. It's just like, I guess it was that Minecon thing that started all the shit. Do you remember, like, after Minecon, he called out some YouTubers and just made up blatant lies. On, he, had, like, a whole fight. He, he just went nuts. And then, and, like, he just, like, kind of went nuts one, uh, one day and has just been crazy ever since. At least he's not relevant anymore. He's just uh, another fat billionaire. <laughs> yeah, you just hear from you just hear here like like every now and then you might hear someone like referencing him. Actually, no, I haven't heard anybody reference him in like two years, no. which I'm okay with. Because Maybe he's gone. Because he's he, no longer relevant. Well, it's because he sold off his company, and then Minecraft it just became oh, it's a Microsoft. That's the thing with Microsoft products is that they're just kind of there. Like even though apparently Man. Minecraft is still like the biggest game on YouTube. Nah, it's Fortnite. No, Fortnite's actually, Minecraft still outperforms Fortnite. Really? Yeah. Huh. 
Huh. Fortnite's number two, obviously, but... I'm surprised. I figured Fortnite was number one. I mean, it's just because Minecraft's got that consistency. But like I said, it's weird. It's a Microsoft product, so you just kind of forget about it. Like the Xbox One, honestly. <laughs> You're not wrong. I only remember the Xbox One is a thing, like occasionally when a game's released on it as well or if i or if i like kind of like when i'm scrolling around youtube i see an achievement hunter video i'm like oh yeah the xbox one shills and then i keep but going I said, oh that fucking reminds me do you remember back when this is also relevant to say but do you remember back when the rooster teeth podcast got pissy at giant bomb over fallout yeah yeah where they just wait which so they had like which one i didn't know about this you have to explain to me so you know the giant bombs like head guy no, what did that used to work for GameSpot or something yeah. and he wrote an, uh, and he wrote yeah. a review about kane and lynch dead kane and lynch and he basically said this is a bad game and they fired him because oh yeah the one where they fired him because he said it was a bad yeah, game yeah so he went and made giant bomb yeah so way back when fallout 4 came out he had the audacity to give fallout 4 a three out of five Honestly, if you were going to give me that scale, I would give it that or a two, depending on how ornery I'm feeling I mean, that day. Specifically, even had two reviews. He said for two scores. He said three out of five for the console version, four out of five for the PC version, specifically because you can mod the PC version. Ah, he's more generous than I am. But <laughs> so these weren't. But these aren't bad scores, especially for a game. No, no. Like Fallout. But Rooster Teeth had a massive promotion with Bethesda at the time. So, on their podcast, their three pe panelists, one was Gus, one was, I think, Ryan from Achievement Hunter, and one was a woman I don't know. And they sort of, they didn't name him, but they did just start calling out this particular review and say, oh, why would you give this game that's getting, like, fives across the board, fives and tens across the board, you know, a bad a bad review score? A, you know, you're just try doing it just to be, you know, edgy, to stand out, to be different. Uh, they say, as all three of them have fucking replica pit boys on their arms, while their site is promoting the game. See, they can't be as pure as me, making fun of Dragon Ball while I have a collection of Dragon Ball things. <laughs> but the point is, is that clearly, like, why would you do that? Like, publicly cry out someone who's who's calling, who's not even like be like calling out a game like that they're just like they, they literally saw they, that's a softball review like i would like i said i would give it a three or a two depending on my mood that day because that's where actually no i would say two i take it back because the ending is shit i mean the ending it doesn't matter which route you take the ending is the same it's like the mass effect thing but nobody cared unlike mass effect where everyone threw a fit yeah well, but it's still just know, mass effect is different because people like that's because people Mostly like Mass Effect. Like, Loved it, but you know, rest until, in uh, peace, Mass Effect. <laughs> until yeah. Andromeda came out. Until Bioware killed it. Until Bioware slowly died. It's okay. That's what happens when you work with EA. Yeah, not wrong. Drain your soul. But uh, yeah, well, they they drain your soul, and then as soon as they're done with you, they uh, take the husk. And just kind of throw it out. But just this whole controversy reminded me of that whole thing with Rooster Teeth. It's like, I mean, now obviously everything's different because everyone's like, oh, Bethesda's evil. And it's like, yeah, welcome to my world. I've been living here for yeah, the well, past decade. Yeah, well, we've been talking about this for a while. <laughs> it's kind of like when uh, Pro Jared put out that Sonic Adventure 2 review. It's like, yeah, this game isn't really good. And then suddenly it became popular to hate it. And I'm like, bitch, I've been doing this for years. It's that horrible it's like sense. Sonic Adventure 2. Everyone loves Sonic Adventure 2. Stop. Nowadays, people are more mixed because a popular YouTuber said it. By the way, his review's good. Don't get me wrong. But after a popular YouTuber, because people are sheep, they're like, oh, I guess, yeah, no, it's a bad game now. Nah. It's like, I've been saying this for years. I had people tell me I didn't like video games because I said it wasn't a good game. It's a horrible sensation when people just, like, agree with you. But they agree with you too late. Like, I'm dreading the day that one, the day when Sam turns around and goes, you know what? Suicide Squad isn't a good character piece. Oh man. What was it? Like, I thought, I I thought about happened. it. <laughs> Maybe one. What was it? Like, I, I was thinking about stuff like that. Like, what was it? So, you know how Daisy's in Smash, and for years people would say Daisy's annoying. Now that she's in Smash, suddenly there's all these people coming out of the woodwork like, oh, I was always a fan of her. And I'm like, bitch, I saw you post before. I'm still indifferent to her. That's fair. I'm just, You're not, I'm I'm just like the uh, Palutena's guidance on Daisy. Hey, look, it's Princess Peach. 
No, no, that, uh, so your symbol's an armpit then? <laughs> I mean, it's better than what else, yes. what else would have been. It's either that or Thomas the Tank Engine train. I mean, I don't know <laughs> if you can really trust Pally Palutena. She does pole dance. I mean, she was almost overthrown once by a bunch of carrots. Some Kakarots, you say? Some carrot cake. Them damn Kakarots. What up, carrot cake always, man? Always crying and keeping us up when we're... Wait. I mean, we're almost there. <laughs> Just another couple months for the US release, I think. Yeah, a couple months and then it comes we'll out. Like Vic and Vic then we Vic can... Vic uh... back. Yes, he's already confirmed. Oh. He's still broly. Oh, Vic Mick and Nurkinov. Vic is still broly. Like, man, maybe I'll get some actual dialogue this time. This isn't just yelling the same Pro thing. Well, the trailers have just been Brody yelling, so... From what, I, from what I've heard, apparently they're going to change the motivation to where he's pissed off at Vegeta, like it should have been. Because he, what? Because no, he was I hate you! Okay. Broly hates Kakarot. Because he cried. A lot. I mean... Like, for like, four hours. <laughs> Thanks, Paragus. I mean, it's still it's probably still a better like... villain than uh, whoever the guy was in the second movie. Giren? No. Uh, wait, second is in the second Dragon Ball movie. Yeah, you know, that the professor guy. Doctor, Doctor with the robot. Oh, Wheelow. Oh, Dr. Wheelow. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was just there. I, don't, yeah. I, I mean, I know a lot of them are alright, but they're like, Broly is terrible, and I was like, it's none of the movie villains are really any good. So it's Bio like, Broly you know, is terrible. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, Bio, Bio Broly. Yeah, Bio Broly is probably the worst movie ever. But you know, that has nothing to do with Bio Broly himself. More to do with the fact that he just kind of melts into a puddle after half a minute. The only good part of that movie is Eighteen shaking down Hercule for her money. And and like, it stars Hercule and the kids, and like nobody else. It, so so you you have Eighteen Go uh, Hercule and the kids, and they turn into Gotenks, the most annoying character in Dragon Ball history. No, no, Gotenks is even in the movie. That's the bizarre thing. Oh, he oh he doesn't. No, oh, okay. It's just the Goten Trunks Eighteen with special music. I, I, I guess Krillin movie. I I straight up forgot. I mean, I don't blame you. I had to double check, but. I mean, it's nice that Eighteen actually got some focus in the movie, but you know that's not the way to do it. Yeah, they, but I mean, not. I mean, she got some focus, and then Bio Broly showed up and backhanded her, and then that was it. And then they uh, just kind of, and then he just kind of died. I was gonna say this is like nobody even really fought him. They just kind of dumped him into the ocean, and he died. Well, they ran away because he was like at, he was made of acid. But you know who isn't? Just touch it harder. Just I mean, that is typically how Dragon Ball works. You punch the guy, and then it doesn't work. And then you just punch them really, really hard, and then it works. And that's why nobody has ever beaten Goku. See, that's why I always think it's funny about well, Dragon Ball, whenever people are, like, pitting Dragon Ball characters against no way, characters from other series. It's like, Dragon Ball characters are stupid. Like, if you felt put them into, like, some of the weird tricks and traps of other characters stupid. from, like, comics or anime, they would be like, what do I do? Uh, what if I power up more? Oh, that's not working. What if I power up more? Okay, that's not working. <laughs> I mean, there's, three, there's three ways to solve a problem in Dragon Ball. Uh, get Shenron to do it, uh, throw a really big key blast, or just kind of let the let the problem sort itself out. Or <laughs> yeah, that's the category of uh, every of uh, Frieza and Goku just drags you and down to hell with them while Seventeen just sits there scratching his ass and people call him an MVP. Yeah, or like how. Oh, there's the dead zone. How do we beat? How do we beat Garlic Junior? We don't. He'll beat Garlic Junior. It's like when you play a video game and the boss keeps exposing his weakness, and you're like, "Why are you doing that?" The boss proves your weakness. You're just like, "What? Why are you doing this? If you didn't do this, I literally couldn't kill you." All right. So every Bowser, why do you have your boss arenas with like mines around them that I can throw you into? Bowser, why do you have an axe on the other side of your bridge that if I grab, I can knock you down into the lava? No. <clears throat> Bowser, why are you rolling around a very specific way around this planet that I can hit you in the butt and keep sending you flying around like a ping pong ball? Bowser, why are you trying to marry Peach anyway? Seriously. Like, eh, what do you really- why do you want to take over the Mushroom Kingdom? It has no imports or exports. 
He just wants the crown so he can be the peach. Oh, please. (laughs) (laughs) Kill it. Listen, listen, the meme's dead. Let's leave it there, where it belongs. finally, finally died. It doesn't really get brought up too much anymore, thank it Christ. Died like oh, Tumblr yeah. died. Oof! Oh, right, we didn't talk, get to talk about the whole Tumblr uh, genocide. Oh, uh, actually, before we talk about t- Tumblr genocide, I just real quick, because we were talking about the bias thing with uh, Rooster Teeth, yeah. I wanted to bring up another one with them, it's funny. So you know how we've made fun of a couple times the death battle with Yang oh, yeah. uh, versus T- Tifa? Oh, yeah. They did, one ag- they did one again recently, one of their uh, one of those death battle exes, the, you know, the ones where they just have them fight and that's it. Yeah. Um, it was Ruby versus Ragna, the Blood Edge. Okay. You get one guess as to who I'm won. I'm gonna guess Ruby because yes. power- she has the all-powerful vagina. I mean, they don't always have have a woman win, but no. But I mean, she's she all, but the, they, she but they, the all powerful. They're both sub subsidiaries of the same company. Yes. So, like, so like Ragnar. So like, I don't really like Blaz Blue, but I know Ragnar's kit. Like, he didn't use any of his kit and then just got murdered. Wait, so it doesn't it have the, Wait, so it doesn't have the Blaz Blue itself. The fake. Like, he has that, but he doesn't use like any of his like transformation abilities or any of his like major powers. He just. Kind of funny. Yes, Ruby then... still uses her super speed, though, right? She she gets her silver eye thing and then kills him. Which doesn't even actually has not even really been explained in the I was show. Gonna say you've watched the show. Does that whole, is that whole thing is that silver eye thing an actual thing or is it just the one time actually? It was, I mean, it, well, it almost happened again, but then. But then it didn't, uh, right? So so it's only happened the once. You see, importantly, they did it the once and they realized. It only so damages here's, here's, the creatures of, in the show. It ah. doesn't work on people. So, so here's what's funny about about even if that, even with that. But no, no, it's okay because they haven't explained it, so they don't even know what it can do. Because if they don't show it again for a while, they can sit there and either hope people forget about it, or then try to bullshit an explanation for it. I mean, or do neither. <laughs> I mean, Screw Attack has been a joke for a great many years. I'm talking I mean, with Great yeah. Battle X, they pretty much say, we just want to show something cool, we don't really care about power levels here. I'm pretty sure even back in the game trailer days, they were a joke. Remember game trailers? I forgot about game trailers. But yeah, I just wanted to bring that up, because I saw that, and I, as soon as I saw that, that was the matchup. By the way, they didn't even, they, did, they, they weren't even subtle about it, they even advertised, like, the new season of Ruby right before the video, what too. And I was just like, hmm, st- me thinks there's a vested interest here. <laughs> Christ. But yeah. To be fair, they also had a death battle where, where even though I loved the video because it was funny, where they had Hercule and Dan fight, Hercule won in the end, but I was like, actually, Dan would kill him. Probably. Dan is, te- Dan is like, from Street Fighter, where even a normal guy is superhuman. Yeah, like uh, they even like in like the, like even like uh, in, in Street Fighter stuff, they say like Dan when it comes to like re- is like way above normal martial artists. It's just when you start getting the people like Ryu, Chun Li, and Co, he's just overshadowed. Yeah. I mean, that's the like if you and, like if you and I were to fight him, or even like your your normal martial artists in okay. Dragon Ball, not the the, 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 the Z fighters, we'll just say for a better for lack of a better term, uh, they would just get trounced by him. Say like, just yeah, people who are below uh, around Hercules, like uh, pre uh, Margin Power Spopovich, right? But pre like woman beating Power Spopovich, yeah. Pre licks his lips powers to beat up his daughter, beat up this noble pre- girl, who as he does it, who starts licking his lips while doing it. That's not creepy. <laughs> you can only barely fly and nothing else. Thanks, Toriyama. Thank you, Toriyama, you fucking sadist. <laughs> What's that? A woman fighter at Dragon Ball? Not on my watch. I like to imagine, like, when they brought Kefla and Kaylee, it's like, and then they get beaten. They're like, no, Tor- T- Toriyama, no. No. You can't do it. But I want to break her teeth in. No. No, you can't yeah, do Toriyama's that. was like, yeah, I don't, I don't understand women characters very well. I was like, geez, I That's why I hate them. You always hate what you don't understand. <laughs> oh, uh, fuck. But yeah. Bethesda sucks. Yeah, Bethesda sucks. As it does suck. Uh, Rooster Teeth and Screw Attack suck. 
Christ, I'm just uh, trying to think. Yeah, Screw Attack lost everything because they had. I remember back in the day when they had obviously James Rolfe. He still. I don't know. Does he still work with them? Or? No. Okay, he's, no, no, he doesn't. His contract did expire. He 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 left a while ago, and he and Cinema Massacre is his its own thing. It's been like that for a while. I just remember. It's been like it's been like fr like you know uh, like friendly with other companies, and then when uh if something happened, they're just like, all right, and now we're just going to uh, we didn't. What are you talking about? We're not with you. <laughs> uh, I also remember the days of good old handsome Tom. Before he died. What happened to him? Uh, I think he got pushed out by. Because wasn't he? He was one of the founders of Screw Attack, wasn't he? Yeah, then, like I think him and NES Punk. Was? No, NES Punk wasn't part of that. He was completely oh, okay. different. I thought he was. Oh, am I thinking of the eight bit? Yeah, guy? he might be. I'm thinking of the eight bit guy. But I think Handsome Tom got pushed out. Ah, uh, yeah, he did. Then I don't know what became of him since. I think he went to but, like Tigwood um... briefly, and then. Yeah, he was at Tig with Tig for a while, because for a while it was kind of a joke that Tig with Tig was the, or what was like the retirement home for people that were kicked out of uh, Screw Attack, because that was a joke for a while. I think he just gave up and, you know, started becoming a regular person, working a regular job. Probably. I know NES Pug was part of um, Tig Tig for a bit, but he mostly does his own thing now, I think. Yeah, he like, like does like podcasts and sort of crap now. I like him. Yeah, no, he's fine. I, I occasionally I, I occasionally watch his stuff here and there. Um but uh Oh yeah, we were gonna talk about the death of uh, you're gonna talk about the death of Oh Tumblr. right, so a few week like a week or so ago, suddenly like Tumblr master leads a whole bunch of accounts that were tagged not safe for work. And like people there was no like warning or anything. All of these accounts were just terminated. Like it kept going on, and allegedly what happened was Tumblr like implemented a new bot to like delete uh, to delete things that like misread um tags or something went wrong and it just decided that anything that like it didn't like just got deleted. And it's kind of hilarious, just the sheer amount of people who just suddenly lost their entire like account for no real reason or warning and. What the fuck was their fuck? What the fuck was their bot? Was it like one of those like fucking Warhammer space? Nah, I think it was the YouTube bot actually. Oh, that's not, you know what? That's that's close. The copyright enough. one, the one that just all kind of automatically decides. No, yeah, this is fine. You know what? I fucking don't understand. So I have a friend who does like uh, YouTube, does, like small parody things on YouTube. They're always like unlisted. They're never monetized, and like they sometimes like things just get flagged for. Stupid reasons constantly, and yet I could like go on YouTube now, look up a popular song, and I will see it uploaded by someone else with advertisings on it. And yeah, I've and seen it's like, too. What the fuck? Why is that? Except someone like actually doing fair parody and fair use can just be chastised because, oh no, the big companies uh, still believe that piracy affects their sales. I know. Um, it doesn't. But... Sometimes, sometimes some games I'll, I'll LP. Usually, like the first video might get um, uh, not copyright struck, but like you know that thing where they put where they put their own advertisements yeah. on it. Like I know that happened with uh, two Tales of Berseria videos, um, and I think it might have happened with one of the Soul Calibur ones as well. But uh, it happened with like, a number of games. I would have to think of each one of them, and that's gonna take me forever to do. Oh, this is the part where they make me do the cabaret. Ugh. Which I don't think is dumb. That even if you're not monetize if you're not monetizing videos. That they can then monetize your content anyway. But you're gonna talk about us because yeah. I think the cabaret is dumb. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I just wanted. Uh, I was groaning about the cabaret. Yeah, I, oh, I thought do that's that what Dream was talking the... about. No, he just be, he's no. talking about in game. You were just like, man, the yeah, cab I'm... cabaret, and he's like, yeah, that's dumb. Yeah, because yeah. I'm I'm now doing at that part where they make me do at least one night of the cabaret, and I, I know, I, I but I laughed in my head. <laughs> I. By the way, I'm not even going to try to do the night well, because I don't remember the hand gestures, nor do I give a fuck. This isn't fun. A lot of people like this mode for some reason, and I don't get it. It's not fun. I always find it funny how, like, actually depressing, like, things like maid cafes and host and hostess clubs, clubs in Japan actually are. But not for the reasons people think when they say, like, oh, it's just, like, borderline prostitution, etc., etc. It's actually far more innocent, but that's what makes it more depressing. It's literally just people who want to have a conversation with another person. So yeah. much that they are willing to pay for it. 
But yeah, obviously there's some yeah. element of sexual connotation uh, undertones about the whole thing, but that's not like it's not like going to a broth or anything. Right. It's just sad. But uh yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, back to the original thing. While I uh, choke through this fucking s segment, I mean, it's not really much. Never more, touch the cabaret it's not again. Not much more to say. Time to like mass delete all of these accounts. Actually, that's not that's not true. Because eventually, on my own, I'll do Kuwami and Kuwami Two. Uh, I'll do those on my own because I actually give a shit about their story. Where this one, uh, it's a good story, but it meanders too much. Mm. There's so much filler they could cut out, and it would be, it would be great, but. It doesn't really start getting really, really good until, like, near the middle part. Because that's when all the filler is just gone, and they now are actually focusing on the actual story. Well, yeah, me and Sivo can talk about the other big news we got recently, which is the Super Robot Wars T. Oh, yes. Oh, I saw! I saw G Gundam and Ray Earth, and I'm like, are you advertising this to me? Am I your target demographic? Like Cowboy Bebop! Wow. Yeah, I saw that, and, uh, uh was it Harlock? Uh, yeah, Harlock's in. Harlock, yeah. He's in. And then, for me, Gal Gai Gar and Might Gain. Yeah, I like, saw that wow, too. Gal okay. Gai Gar and Might Gain, and Eldorado Feed. Yeah, got next, nice. got next swords in as well, and it's like, damn, all you need is Kotetsu Shinji, and it's like every show I watched in the, like, mid-2000s. So when's Geki Gengar 3 getting in? Actually, in the Desco is in, but only the shit moves in. Yeah, but it's the edgy movie. Oh, yeah, it's oh, because they want to use oh, the best version oh. of Akito's mech, even though it's the lamest one. Oh, why don't we just pretend it didn't happen like like normal people? But then we've got Mazinga's Infinity instead of like any of the others, which is baffling to me. Wait, no Mazinga? No, we're getting infinite getting the version of Infinity of the you know, the version in the film Infinity, which means we're basically only gonna get Z and Great. Again. Oh, th that's lame. I like Mazinga. I like Kaiser. fucking V where they had not only Mazinga Mazinga they had Mazinga and then Mazinga Zero, which yeah. But then Great Mazinga finally got uh, upgraded with with uh, Emperor G. Yeah, because that was what they were gonna do. Because they were originally going to make a, a, Maz a great Mazinger show that was gonna have yeah, that. Shin Great Mazinger. Yeah, that didn't yeah. happen. Um, I just miss Grendizer. But, uh, no one cares about Grendizer. I know I'm the only one who cares about Grendizer, but I like Grendizer. But it's like such an interesting cast list. And also, also, it's weird to get rid of Mazinger because his origins are tied to uh, Super Robot yeah. Wars. I mean, they've even got Shingetta in as well, which is great for me, because I love Shingetta. Shingetta is in every version. Uh, it's been in every version recently. Uh, they have sort of gone with the new Getter ones as well before. And Getter's they that's want, it. They don't want to use the old TV versions anymore for some reason. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, they probably just stick with shit. Oh, I mean, well, they usually use Shin because Armageddon is like one of the most popular ones. It's also like one of the better, best series in the show. And honestly, honestly, I love the Shin Getter. It's just really Also, good. you can just get back, you know, Ryoma, uh, Ryoma's new VA for Armageddon and you can get back his older VA. Yeah, but they or, really need well, <laughs> The thing is, everyone's like, and yeah, hell, but, yeah, you, but, you, 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 if you're feeling frisky. Anymore, and I'm like, but, they already have enough stock audio. But I mean, they could also, it, it's if they even want to get frisky, they could even bring the pilots that were there before Ryoma and them came back. So they could even just have them in there too if they want. Nah. So they have more pilots to work with. I mean, the main thing is that Getaro Get Robo is almost, is almost always in these games just, because, just so they can have Get a Robo, really. Like, he's never yeah. an important part, or if it is, it's just, well, we need get a radiation, because how else do we get out of this mess? Get a radiation solves everything. Like how the V, which is obviously which one me and Saber played the most recently, has like. Um, well, I guess V has a really, like, kind of bizarre cast, that's what you think about it. Especially because it tries to juggle, like, three different alternate universes all running together at the same time. Alongside trying to shoot horn together like double O's stuff alongside uh fuck what's it called? Um Cross Ange and that sort of batshit insanity and full metal panic. But uh so did they sh for G Gun and they show we all pilots from G Gun are gonna be I mean they haven't shown but we I mean the trailer had Alan B showed Alan B and Sai, I think. The yeah, so dragon gun. Okay. 
So, no, so, so, okay, so, so Domo and Alan B and Sai, so they'll probably have the entire Shuffle Alliance, Alan B and Master Asia. Yeah, for sure. I mean, must. Um, and possi and possibly Devil Gundam. Master Asia doesn't always show up. Well, he, he shows up, but he doesn't always, is always playable. Well, he wasn't in an MX He might at be all. like an enemy. Hmm? He wasn't in an MX at all. That was like just post the uh, series. Yeah. He was in Jet. I mean, depends how much of. Uh, oh, I guess it was the. Was it just the regular burning that we saw in the trailer? Was it uh, God? Uh, or was it. Uh, sorry, was it shining or was it burning in the trailer? No, no, it's, it's burning. They're not going to. They're not going to do Shining to, uh, to upgrade anymore, probably, for that. Yeah. Unfortunately. They, like, but th I think that I think Master Age will be in, because they show Sai and Alambi. No one really cares about Sai. Alambi is fairly popular, so when they do another trailer, they'll show Master Age. Uh, they just, well, it's just they stick the shuffle lights, so because otherwise G-Gunner money has, like, two, two oh, yeah. three playable I, I, I think it'll be, yeah, I think it'll be the shuffle lights. I think Master Asia. Will probably if he's playable at all, he'll start off as an antagonist, and then you can recruit him. Probably. It's like all the UC Gundams um, are here, you know, basically just there for the sake of. Well, you need to have UC Gundam, and you need to have the. Uh, you need to have new Gundam in. Right. Slash high new Gundam. So. Yeah, they'll have those. They might have um, the Devil Gundam as a boss. Oh, for sure, that probably. Um, and um, I think yeah, I think it would be Shuffle Alliance and Allenby and. The uh, Devil Gundam and Master. They say that as if Gunbuster doesn't have literally one unit, which is the Gunbuster itself. Technically, yeah, but who two, cares about the other yeah. ones? Yeah, but... I mean, yeah, but nobody cares about the other ones. There's, so, like, there's one other. The, her, her like, one friend, and they're slightly less inferior mass produced Gunbuster, but she wasn't in Z3, so, you know, we can't have that. Probably just... Ray Earth might, might just be Hikaru, but they might put the other two in and give them... Uh, they might, but it might just be... I don't really know enough about Ray Earth to comment. All I know about Ray Earth is that it was never getting in, ever. Yeah. I mean, we said that about... And then here it is. We said that about Mike, guys. There was a there was a whole list of, like, stuff that would never, ever get in the Super Robot Wars ever, and I think at this point, all of them have gotten in. I mean, so so now technically a magical girl is in the series. <laughs> I mean, technically Godzilla and I has been in the series. He was in the mobile game. But uh, but yeah, I was happy to see that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward. To it. I know it's going to be on Switch and PS4. Yes, and the Switch is also, is region three, as it turns out. Um, and I think there's going to be an English version that's going to be importable. Yes, so what they do, because they can't actually release these games out, oh. they can't release these games in like... That, uh, that, that thing, that thing where your mic goes, it happened Sorry. again. Well, like, the thing is, they can't just release the games because of, um, well, various copyright problems, all these licensing yeah. issues. So what they do is they release these, like, full English translations, but they only release them in Singapore where they're allowed, or like sort of English, or they release it in Singapore, which is like an Asian country, but the sort of primary language is English. Yeah. So it gets the full English translation on the knowledge that people are going to import it. Yeah, and they're like, so they're like, yeah, but it's it's only for these territories, you know, wink, wink. So don't you go and pick one up. But yeah, I'm probably going to import it because. Uh... Yeah, same. Uh, it looks really. I mean, good. there's just too many series here that I like that to not play it. Same. I I haven't really gotten around to really playing one. I've watched like playthroughs and shit. I've been wanting to play one for a while, and with this one coming out, I'm just like, I I'm gonna import this. I one. like V. I skipped X because I didn't really like X's uh, cast list. X was not very good, mm. unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Also, had like really questionable looking like originals. Or they weren't questionable, they were just super boring. Let me actually find the list of uh, units inside X or people. Oh, Daitan 3, but who gives a fuck about Daitan 3? I don't even know what that is, to be it's honest It's like with you. 70s, like, kind of combat of V style oh, okay. thing. Ah, okay. Uh, or, like a or a or a Battle of Dumbine is in, but. That's oh, the, nice. that's in the next one as well. Dumbine's in. Uh, yeah, I know. I know Dumbine. Zeta, double Zeta, Shark Cat. Basically, like the the classic UC Gundam stuff. Uh, F ninety one Crossbone, uh, Gundam Wing Endless Waltz version because that's the only version they really like to do most of the time. 
Yeah, they usually, when they bring, I've noticed that like a lot of other media, when they bring Gundam Wing stuff in, it's usually, except for in uh, Gundam Versus, they usually bring in the Endless Wall. Well, let's say for Rebels, it's because it's easier to do, because like, oh, in, super, in like Gundam Wing Cannon, all the wing pilots are like terrorists who are against the Federation and all of that jazz. So like most of the time they can't really do the TV versions because like, well, you're a bunch of Federation lapdogs. Why would they be like yeah, working right. with you on your ship if they hate you? They did the TV version in Alpha One, and like for half the game, they just show up as uncontrollable NPCs shooting at everyone. Yeah, and they're like Federation That's dogs. So um, they did Z, which they actually put a whole bunch of series in that were like kind of that anti-government sort of ro small rogue types, yeah, like Eureka Seven was in. Yeah. Uh, yes. Ah, Eureka Seven! What a disaster. <laughs> But, you know, just that kind of all the uh, Gundam Double, all these like kind of series that were small group, small sort of groups against the evil Federation. So they could finally do gotcha. TV Wing. Uh, Gundam, Recognist, Dear and Chi. I honestly don't know anything about it. Yeah, I don't know that uh, one. It's not I know good. that was the last one made by Tomino, and I've heard uh, things. Oh my God. It was, yeah, it was, uh, it, had, it had its ups and downs. Uh, it's code, not the worst thing ever. Code, speaking of, Code Geass. Yes. <laughs> ah, the best awful show. You know what's funny? The, I, I think I made fu I made fun of that in a recording, like G Gundam, not, not, uh, Code Geass, not too long ago, in like a recording that either comes out later this this week or earlier. I don't remember which which uh, game I was recording where I made fun of it, so here it comes again. <laughs> and then Cross Ange, Mazaga Zero, Gurren Lagan, and Nadia. And it's like, yeah, there's some things, there's some series in here that I like, but a lot of things I just generally don't care for at best. So it's like, yeah, I skipped that one. That's fair. I think I'll probably stop this recording after the cabaret because I'm. There's still, I've been like not even really been paying attention as the cutscene's been going on because I don't really, like I said, the cabaret stuff. I just don't scenes. like it. Cutscenes. Uh. I don't know why people like the cabarets. Can you explain this to me, please? It's okay. When you get to, if you ever get Super Robot Wars, you'll have plenty of cutscenes to skip through. Yes. Except those will actually... I'll probably actually read those, where like this, I'm just like... Uh... Words, 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 well, words. Well, they, words, try, words, they do try in Super Robot Wars to like make people at least at least tolerable. I mean, they're, they're usually tolerable in this game. It's it's honestly zero is the, the one where um, especially replaying it now, like where it becomes an issue because there's just so much padding in the main story. Like having side stuff is cool. Oh wait, now nah, I got it. I accidentally hit the tutorial thing again. Uh, I was like in a, I was stuck in that fucking uh, owl loop because I wasn't paying attention. But um, it's in more of an issue in this one because a lot of the side stuff falls into the main story and not organically. It's just like, you walk, it's like, oh, now we're dragging you into the cabaret. Why? Ah. I mean... Like, uh, Kiwami 2 did a lot better job of, like, horning in their little uh, side stuff other than the cabaret that just kind of got ha uh, half-assed in because it's the cabaret. But, like, the Majima uh, construction crew was brought in better. Yeah, I don't care. Well, I mean, they had a bit more framework to work in with Kiwami 2. Whereby yeah. they've got a whole other, they've got all of this game that they can play. And so, like, the Majima construction was actually was still the same plot point as it was in Yakuza 2. It just wasn't a playable minigame as in the original Yakuza 2. Hmm. Alright, let's just run this fucking club. Open for business. I don't care. Hooray. Open for business. I don't so care. So Persona Q2 comes out in Japan today. Oh, yeah. I've you been seeing images things. of that. <laughs> and then next week, the dancing games come out here. Oh, uh, yeah, I've not been caring about those. Oh, I have them pre-ordered. Good for you. Because I got the... I mean, I told you about that. I got the collector's edition for, like, you know, the collection of all of them for 50 bucks because of an Amazon glitch. It's okay. I can't wait for you to get them the, like, night to the games. They're just, like, nylon duffel bags. <laughs> I just, like I open it up, they don't have discs. It's just a nylon duffel bag and a picture of Todd Howard. It's just we aren't planning on doing it. We aren't planning on doing like, it. Todd Howard, you don't even work for Atlas. He does now. Degenerate. Welcome to Shin Megami Tensei Five Skyrim. Degenerate. 
that his favorite word or something? He just randomly called people degenerates during one of the things. Really? What he should have done yeah. is he should have looked at the crowd and asked, what's the matter? Do you people not have phones? I have no idea what this signal is. Oh, Miss Red, who cares? Man. I don't care. I don't, and I'm not gonna spend the time Blizzard, to like just, grab the, the fucking guy. I appreciate I don't how fucking, fucking care. lucky Blizzard got, though. After the whole like Fallout uh, Immortal controversy, and then like almost a week later, that's when 76 just suddenly hit, hits the fan, and everything just get, turns against Bethesda. They got so fucking lucky. They did. They really oh, did. Oh, phew, we can just develop this game and do whatever because nobody cares anymore. And then Bethesda needs like you needs like EA to be found out. Like sacrificing children to their dark god, or something. I guess actually, I mean, they probably actually, do that. Bethesda must be praying that Smash Brothers fails somehow. Please fail. Because if Smash Bros. were to fuck up, then suddenly like every all bets would yes, be off. Because it's already like the most pre-purchased game. Oh, oh it, might... it is, yeah, yeah. It's like a broken records for pre-purchase. I mean, I won't say I need like I pre-purchased it or anything. Uh, I don't have a Switch, so... I'm, I'm probably gonna buy it, though, because uh, that way I get the Piranha Plant, I can main the Piranha Plant when I get the game. You will be able to, like, get the Piranha Plant anyway, and just be, uh, uh, paid DLC later. I have no idea these signals. How... I'm not Japanese, I don't know these unless I have a guide. Yeah, it's like in those puzzles... It's like how there's those sometimes those puzzles in these games where it's like, oh, you just need to win these games of Mahjong, and it's like... I don't know what I'm doing. Did I get a did exactly. I get a bingo? <laughs> thankfully, thankfully there is actually you can find tiles that will just like insta win the game for you. So it's infinitely better than just kind of trying to play trying to learn actual mahjong. Because when am I ever gonna play like that outside of this game? Exactly. I'm sure you know how to play those, Sabo. What, Mahjong? Uh, I'm afraid I'm not that weeby. Oh. Sorry how to dare disappoint you. Lie. you. I think it's like poker, but with tiles instead of cards. And like 60 different hands as opposed to whatever poker has. I don't know, it's something that they, they play an anime to look sophisticated. Mahjong is a weird game that I will never understand. It's a strange game played by a country that I've never been to. Probably don't intend to go to, really. It's like, what would you even do when you get there? It's like, oh hey, it's me, a white person here in the middle of Tokyo. I mean, yeah. Oh, I guess it's just a kind of soul-destroyingly depressing place. Oh, oh shit. If I wanted to that, I could have just visited Chicago. That is true, you could have. Or Detroit, or New Orleans, or... No, no you, visit, you visit Detroit if you want to get shot, there's two differences. No, you visit Chicago if you want to get shot. Detroit is even worse. No, I actually think Chicago's worse now. Oh, really? Yeah, I think just pure shootings. Chicago is worse. Because I think with the... yeah, I think, <laughs> I think yeah, with... Chicago, I think beat it. I out think the now. problem with Detroit is they can't afford guns anymore. That's true. Yeah. You know what? You might be Which, right. I think Chicago. But how the hell? But now they can't afford guns. How the hell are we gonna have Adam Jensen now? I mean... just throwing rocks at each other. But it, I mean, Chicago. You gotta give Chicago credit for its like very uh very different stance on gun control. Well, they just work on the basis that eventually we'll run out of people, or we'll run out of bullets. One will happen first. And then it's like, well, no one can get shot after that, can they? I'm literally just skipping this dialogue. I am... F I, I want out of this cabaret now. It's words, 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 words. I don't care about this cabaret drama bullshit. Cabaret... 
Seriously, someone explain to me why this is like a popular mini game, even like with people in the US. Um, I'm gonna explain this today. It's like, I guess it just appeals to a different mindset. Because it's just like basically any kind of uh, tactics game, right? Not a very fun well, tactics game. I like tactics games. No, but other people like just kind of. I like strategy and tactics games. This is not a good one. This is just. Like, honestly, like, if you know all the symbols, it's literally just dropping people into the thing and then playing the main game and just recruiting people. It's just, you can brute force it. It's not good, especially if you just grab that and cheat. Or if you're from Japan and know this stuff because you're from Japan. So, what if I, um... So, one thing we were going to discuss, though, so that while we're waiting for time, is we were going to point out how grand total and the amount of uh, actual dialogue or the amount of time, uh... Punish Snake spends talking in Metal Gear Solid Five, or Big Boss in general, aka the reason the amount why we had to desperately hire a Hollywood actor for four minutes worth of just dialogue. Of course. Just think of how much of that time. Oh God damn it! I tried to avoid the side story and I bumped into uh -huh. it. Fuck. I was trying to get to the phone. Four minutes. It's Sorry. the politician uh -huh. one. But I just want to remind you, it's four the... minutes and we hired a big budget Hollywood actor and even the bullshit excuse of all, but we wanted to get his facial mocap was bullshit because they then admitted, yeah, we'd layered like so many other people's like motion capture on it to get the look right anyway. They Just think of all the money they could have saved just getting Dave Hader or boss, the, a big boss's voice from Metal Gear 4 in instead, yeah. and how much dialogue could we could have had instead. They enough money to f nice. actually finish the fucking game. No. Yeah. Finish the game, add, add more cuts, have more cutscenes. Give an ending? But, you know. Or, I don't know, just cut it off once the skull face figures resolved, because then there is a uh, Yeah, honestly, that's when I stopped playing, because I was like, yeah, alright, I'm good, and then I stopped I playing had it. the plot's finished, there's nothing else left to do now. I, I stopped playing after that. I was like, oh, there's more episodes. It's like, nah, I'm done. I'm done. This is where the story ends for me. At this point, the rest is just... The, uh, for, in my opinion, after that, that, like, a couple years later is when Solid Snake infiltrates it and starts killing people. That's, as, that's what it is as far as I'm concerned. But how are you going to answer that really, really important question? Well, why there's two big bosses? Of why you fought Big Boss twice. That like we told oh because you're fighting oh because because uh you're playing a fake snake I already figured it out before the well, game well like, it's not even a point that they need to addressing because no I fig no. I figured it out in the hospital no the, no the point is that they made a whole game devoted to why even though you apparently killed Big Boss in Metal Gear One he's still alive in Metal Gear Two so when are we gonna get the game snake. that explains why he's alive in Metal Gear Solid Four though but I'm like what was but I'm like what was wrong with the solution of oh he just escaped. He escaped and like, he got cyborg parts. That would have been that would have been fine. We didn't need to spend a whole game in the past explaining how they made this whole big fake big boss. A just whole game. Big <laughs> fight at the end of Metal Gear One. A whole game that's devoted to just basically shitting on Metal Gear, yeah. Because then it's like, oh hey, you know how you remember Huey Emmerich? Turns out he's a wife. Turns out he's a wife murdering psychopath. But it's okay. He has to. It's okay though. He has to live because he doesn't die until much, much later. Because he has to die suiciding with Emma with uh, uh, Emma Emmerich. Because they already said that. So it's like, oh, well, Big Boss and company just go. Yeah, you know what? Even though you've lied, betrayed, it, backstabbed us, betrayed us multiple times, you can just go. They just push him off on a but boat. But yeah, they didn't. Yeah, they wouldn't just shoot him in the fucking head or anything because they're mercenaries. Or shoot him in the head literally when they found him in Skullface's yeah. shit. Oh yeah, you you the traitor, crack. But no, he gets to live because Cannon says he does. And it's like, well, maybe he should have done something better to explain why he survived. How, here's the thing: you could have made the traitor not him, and he just got captured. But it's okay because now Kojima's doing Death Standing. That game that'll never come it'll out. It'll come out. I just it will come out, and the people will be like, "Oh, this wasn't the best game ever." It's oh yeah, just it's not gonna I don't. I don't have high. It's hopes just in it. stupid and confusing and weird. And then people are like, "Oh, but it's genius." Yep. And then a few years later, they'll be like, "Yeah, it was. It was. It came out." 
His best weird game that actually worked was probably Metal Gear Solid 2. Mm. I, f- he's, I feel like he's one of those people that needs somebody hanging over him to be like, no, don't do that. That's stupid. He does, he no, don't do that. That's he definitely dumb. needs people. Because MGS5 is him basically unrestricted. Yeah. But uh, anyway, let's cut off the video here. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed but make fun of Bethesda and then ending with make fun of Kojima. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. Bye.